Well, hello everybody. My name is Christine. I'm the Education Coordinator here at the Journey Museum and Learning Center. One of my favorite parts of my job is I get to create lessons for the visitors that come. And I get to create lessons everywhere from dinosaurs to the Native Americans to the pioneers. But I think my favorite section is the animal uh, part of the museum that we have. And I love to create animal lessons. And so one of the lessons that we have here at the museum is about endangered species. And this is a very important topic for us to learn about. Um, some of the ways that we humans affect animal species and what we can do and what scientists have done to kind of get rid of our impact on these animals. So first of all, uh, an, en an endangered species is a species of animal that is in danger of becoming extinct. And right here is a picture of the black-footed ferret. You see, for a long time, throughout the 1900s, people actually thought the black-footed ferret was extinct. It wasn't until about 1979 that they found, uh, someone found a um, black-footed ferret, I believe it was in Wyoming. And since then, there have been efforts here in South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, for scientists uh, to try to bring up the black-footed ferret population. So my dad is actually a, wild, a retired wildlife, bi wildlife biologist, and I talked to him about endangered species and the black-footed ferret in particular. And he told me that one of the main reasons why an endangered species becomes ex uh, endangered is because they're very specific to something. So in the black-footed ferret's case, black-footed ferrets eat prairie dogs. But I should clarify and say they only eat prairie dogs. Only. That's it. Nothing else. So I'm going to show you a demonstration. And you can do this demonstration at home. The best way to do it is with M&Ms or Skittles or some kind of fun candy. But what I decided to do today is use something I had on hand. I have these cute foam stickers with different animals. But what we're going to do is ignore the fact that they're animals and just look at the colors of these stickers. So imagine that these colors represent different species of animals. So maybe you could say the pink represents coyotes or the green represents snakes or something like that. Well, let's look at these yellow stickers and imagine that those stand for prairie dogs. Now, farmers don't want prairie dogs um, in their fields because they might be ruining their crops. So to get rid of those, these yellow stickers, the prairie dogs, you could use different pesticides or traps to get rid of those prairie dogs. Well, the problem is, is in a particular area, is if I get rid of all these yellow stickers, which represent prairie dogs, what are the black-footed ferrets going to eat? They only eat prairie dogs. So you can see why in this example, a black food ferret is a highly endangered species until it's still endangered, but scientists like my dad were, were working on reintroducing the black food ferret back into um, the wild and they would lead them down into prairie dog holes to give them something to eat. So they would go to areas where the prairie dogs were. So that's one example of an endangered species, but there are other ways that animals can become endangered. So the other way I want to talk about is invasive species. So today I'll use a more of a water example for invasive species. So first of all, this right here is a picture of a lake ecosystem. In a healthy, balanced ecosystem, we would have bugs, birds, frogs, fish, and they all rely on each other because maybe the fish are eating the bugs, the bugs are eating the plants, and it's a healthy, balanced ecosystem. Now, an invasive species is 
a species that's not native to a particular ecosystem and yet it's introduced into the ecosystem. So one of the examples that maybe you've heard about would be the zebra mollusk. Now you may think I haven't heard of that, but if any of you have ever gone fishing before, you might have heard about having to wash off the bottom of your boat before going into a particular lake. Well, that's because the zebra mollusk, for example, can get onto the bottom of the boat. And if you don't rinse it off and you go to a whole different lake, maybe in a different state or a different county, that zebra mollusk would then be introduced into the ecosystem. Now, the invasive species that I'll be talking about today, for an example, is right here. This is the Asian carp. The name suggests that it's not native here to North America, right? So what's the problem with introducing an invasive species to an ecosystem? Well, the thing is, in a balanced ecosystem, we have our food chain. And notice here that here's a minnow. It gets eaten by a perch, which, which gets eaten by a pike, which gets eaten by an osprey, and so on. In a balanced ecosystem, you have the predators. The predators are actually needed. But when you have an invasive species added to an area, it does not have a natural predator, which means something like the Asian carp, they'll get more and more Asian carps because nothing's eating them. So they can multiply. Now, okay, so you might think, what's the problem with just having lots of Asian carp in the lake? Well, they need to eat. And the thing about Asian carp is because they're not natural to that specific ecosystem, is they'll eat anything because it's a new area, so they're, they're not going to be particular. So let's pretend that our colored foam stickers down here are representing different animals in the water. So an Asian carp might eat a pink, it's not particular. It might eat green, might eat red, maybe another pink, maybe a purple, maybe a green again. So it's eating up all these things. But if a particular species, remember, endangered species are usually specific to something. So if a species that's not the Asian carp, if a particular species is only going to eat, say, the red stickers, and if the Asian carp is going around eating up the red along with all these other colors, just like with the black-footed ferret, that species would no longer have the red to eat. So basically, to sum this all up, when it comes to endangered species, they are specific to something. And if an, if an invasive species or pesticide comes around to destroy some of the food source, that endangered species is going to continue to be endangered and perhaps become um, extinct one day. So I have a second video that you'll find here on our journey website that will be talking about what humans um, did in particular to help save an endangered species. So this is a sad topic, but there is hope for these species. And I'd like you to check out the second video to find out what scientists can do to help out these species. So I hope you'll join us for the next one.